In this video, I'll show you how I have created my vacuum dashboard in Home Assistant. I'll show how you can create buttons that you can select in order for the vacuum to clean one or multiple rooms. Like always, if you don't want to follow the tutorial, you can get the full code from the Gumroad link in the description. First of all, you will need to have a vacuum integrated with Home Assistant. You will also need to know how to command this vacuum to clean individual rooms. I use the built-in RoboRock integration. It's a bit finicky to figure out the room commands, but they have a good guide on the integration page. Also, if you're watching this video in the future, the process might be simpler than what it currently is. For the dashboard, I will use this button. I have showed how to create this in a previous video. To make it easier for myself, I will make this button into a template. I also have a video about this. All we need to do is copy the whole code and paste it into the raw configuration editor. Then we need to create some variables so it's easy to update the name, label, and icon later on. Then we can start building the vacuum dashboard. I start by creating a one column grid, then I add another two column grid inside it. I actually prefer using the grid cards instead of vertical and horizontal stack cards. I then add the first custom button card, and I use the template we just created. The only thing I change for now is that I set the tap action to toggle. I then add the variables that we will need to change for each button. We then need to create a toggle input helper for each room. Go to settings, devices and services, helpers, and create a new toggle helper. Name it something that makes sense. Then create one for each room. You can see here that I now have four toggle helpers. Now we just need to add these helpers as entities to the related button on our dashboard. It is of course nice to know what buttons are toggled. So let's adjust the background color based on the state of this helper. All this does is to make the background yellow when the entity is on. You could use a website like colorhunt.co to find nice colors. Then just make sure toggling the button works. Now we could just copy this card and create a new one for each room that we want to be able to vacuum. You will of course need to edit the room name, icon, and toggle helper for each of the buttons. Then lastly I will add a start button. This is the same as the other ones, but I will add it to the one column grid. This will make it stretch the whole width of the grid. I make this button green, and I remove the state styling and entity. Next, go to automations and scenes, scripts and create a new script. Call it something that makes sense. Then add an action under sequence. This is where you will tell the vacuum to clean one of your rooms. Depending on the vacuum that you have, this could be different to what I am doing here. But, as long as you can tell your vacuum to clean one of your rooms, you can still follow the rest of this video. For the RoboRock integration, you have to select Call Service, then choose the Vacuum Send Command Service. Select your vacuum entity, then under Command write App Segment Clean, and under Parameters we tell the vacuum the segment we want to clean. In this example, the kitchen is 19. Again, follow the documentation of the RoboRock integration to figure this out. I'll also link a video in the description that goes through this in detail. The kitchen is actually 18. Then we just need to duplicate this script for each room. When done, you should have one script for each room. We also need to create one script that cleans everything. The sequence here is probably going to be a bit different than the other scripts. For me, with a Roborock, I use the vacuum start service instead of the send command service that we used for the other scripts. Now that we have all the individual scripts, we can create the main script that will start the vacuuming. This script will tell our vacuum to clean the selected rooms, or everything if no rooms are selected. First, we will check if any of the buttons are toggled. If no buttons are toggled, we will run the script that cleans everything. Start by adding a if-then action. Then add an entity condition, select one of your room helpers and set state to off. Continue adding all your room helpers as individual conditions. Then under Action, I select the script that cleans everything. Then we need to set up the cleaning of individual rooms. Start by adding a new action, again choose an If-Then action. Under Condition, 
Select Entity and input one of your room helpers. Set the state to on. Then under Action, select the related script. So whenever this helper is on, i.e. the button is toggled, we will run the action of cleaning that room. Now we need to stop and delay the script for a while until the vacuum is done cleaning this room. Otherwise, it will go to the next room straight away and the vacuum won't be able to finish. So to do this, add a new action right after the script and select the Wait for Template action. The template is pretty simple. We will just check if the state of the vacuum is returning. This will make sure that the script doesn't go to the next step until the vacuum state is returning. As before, this might be different with your vacuum. Now that we've finished one room, we just need to duplicate this block and edit the helper and script for each one. So I will just fast forward through this step. Now that you have all these if-then blocks, it would be smart to rename them so that it's a bit easier to understand in the future. Last thing we need to do is reset the room helpers back to off. Add a new action and select input boolean turn off and under entity choose all the room helpers. And that should make the vacuum system functional. But the last thing I want to show is how I've added information about when the scripts was last run. To do this I create a template sensor in my configuration.yaml file. As you can see I have all my template sensor in a separate file. I'll paste this code in the description, so I suggest you just copy it from there. Then save the file. Go to Developer Tools and Home Assistant and click Check Configuration. If everything looks right, you can reload the YAML configuration. Check that the template sensor is working. If the scripts has never been run before, this will come up as null, but it will update once you've run the scripts. Then we just have to add these sensors to the label of the buttons. We could do this with some basic JavaScript. Start with three square brackets, type return, and we want to return the state of the attributes of our template sensor. And we could add a go to the end so it makes a bit more sense. Then you just need to add the same code to the rest of the buttons. And that concludes this video. Hopefully you find it useful. You can, of course, build on this as well. In my dashboard, I have a few subpages with information and settings for my vacuum. Let me know if you want me to make a video about that as well. I know it's taken some time between my uploads recently. I will try to get back to posting more regularly. My last few videos has been much bigger projects than my regular content. Let me know in the comments what kind of content you prefer. Thanks for watching and take care.